In this episode, we're going to repair a couple of uh, eight track tapes. The actual eight track cartridge itself, when the tape breaks, yes, they can be fixed. Let's uh, fix a couple different problems with a few different tapes. A buddy of mine gave me a bunch of eight track tapes that he needs me to fix. And what's happened on these is, well, some of them the tape is broken. Some of them the tape is just sticking. But you can see many of them the tape came apart at the splice. So we're going to uh, open these cassettes up, or cassettes, cartridges up, and, um, and repair them. We're going to repair them using some stuff I've got in some repair kits that I've got here. I have sensing tape. I have some replacement pads. See how many I've got in here. Some of these tapes may require pads to be replaced. So I've got some replacement pads. I don't have a lot of these though, so I may not replace the pads on them unless I absolutely have to, but because I've only got four. But I've got some sensing tape, so the ones that need the sensing tape replaced, we're going to uh, splice them. So i got to get these things open, and there's different ways of opening an 8-track cartridge. In many cases, you just have to pry it apart, because they're held together by plastic clips that hold them together. And there's no real easy way to get into these things other than just to pry. So most of the time, these tapes, you can pry them apart and use a screwdriver. My buddy already actually popped this one apart before he brought it to me and opened it up. But basically what an eight track tape is, is it's a single loop of tape. The tape is pulled out from the middle and it's self tensioning, self winding. So to repair these things, all we need to do is just get the tape loop, get the tape threaded back out and we're just gonna splice the tape back together. And uh, the splice, of course, the metallic splice, this is what's used to actually uh, advance to the next track. So this goes on the front of the tape. And a lot of, to a lot of people they, they find that they, they don't understand why it goes on the front. They think because most of the time when you splice a tape you splice it on the back. You don't splice it on the, the part that hits the heads. But in an 8-track tape the sensing foil is what's used to select the track. So I've got some quarter inch sensing foil here. This came from Radio Scrap. And this was used on reel-to-reel -reel machines as well for the auto reverse. But it's the same stuff. And all we need to do is take a small piece of it. There's a uh, hundred inches of this, so this will splice about a hundred to uh, one hundred eight-track tapes because you only need basically about an inch. So we're just going to take a little bit of the splicing tape, and I'm going to cut an inch off, and we're going to splice the tape back together. So I'm just going to prep the tape. and I should be doing this with a razor blade. And no big deal though. Uh, my buddy that owns this, he just wants to be able to play these back and transfer them over to his computer. So basically it's going to go through the machine about four times and then, uh, then the tape itself will be put to pasture.
So how an 8-track tape works is the tape itself, it's a self-tensioning loop. As the tape is pulled out from the center and it winds up on the outside, because the outside spool is is slightly larger, it will self-tension itself. So the tape is threaded along here like this, and as it goes through the playback machine, the capstan pulls the tape against the pinch roller, which is built into the, the cartridge itself, and it causes the tape just to go around like that. The actual top part of the cartridge is what keeps the tape from unspooling. So this snaps down on top and the guides here keep the tape in place. So the tape comes in here and it spools around and then it gets pulled out of the middle and goes this way around this guide. This is why you can't rewind an 8-track tape or any type of cartridge tape for that matter. Uh, it just goes in circles and it pulls from the middle and uh, goes back on the outside. So that tape is fixed. So let's test this 8-track player out. So an 8-track tape is basically four programs. There's two channels, so that's two of your tracks. So there's four programs. You've got track one, track two, track three, and track four. And the the full albums were typically broken down into two tracks per side for a record album. So track one and two would typically be side one, track three and four would be side two. Now sometimes they had to rearrange the music depending on the length of the tracks so that they would fit. And in some cases they actually couldn't fit them because typically you were dealing with a 10 minute loop of tape and that loop of tape went around four times and that was your 40 minutes of recording. They actually did make blank recording tapes too. I have a 45 minute blank tape here. They made a 45 and they made a 90 minute tape. Now, I don't have any 90s, I've only got this one here, and I'll do a demo with my 8-track recorder at some time. When I haul it out, we'll do a recording. I'll record some royalty-free stuff on here so you guys can hear it. And then we can play it in its full sound quality so you can hear what the sound quality was like on 8-track. But 8-track tapes typically went to... The, the frequency response wasn't as good as what people would think. But they did go to 20 kilohertz, but you see the frequency started to roll off when you got uh, beyond 10 kilohertz. But the frequency response itself was relatively good all the way up to beyond 10 kilohertz, and then the frequency started to roll off. And that was just because of the tape speed. They used 3 and 3 quarter inch tape speed as opposed to a cassette which had one and seven eighths. Now you have to remember at the time when eight track tapes were around, cassette tapes were pretty much limited to uh, voice quality. They were terrible. Cassette did improve. Uh, better tapes were developed. Chrome tapes were developed. Ferrochrome and metal tapes were developed, which extended the frequency response on most cassette decks to at least 16 kilohertz and on some of the better ones they would claim to achieve 20 kilohertz uh, frequency response as you can see here the frequency response for an 8 track is relatively good till you get to a little over 10 kilohertz and then you start to uh, you start to lose your db so you know you're at minus 10 db here pretty much flat and you've you've lost 10 more db you're at minus 20 db so that's for a minus 10 signal going in uh, you end up with a minus 20 signal coming back so you've lost 10 db between that 10 and 20 kilohertz anyway um cassette as i say got got much better with better tapes and with noise reduction and that pretty much spelled the fate of eight track but eight track themselves actually were they were pretty good in their day you know it was it was the first format that you could actually take in your car and have music in your car and a lot of cars came with a factory eight track player the machines themselves were very very simple there was not even a pinch roller because that was part of the cartridge itself so you had a tape cartridge the machine had a playback head and it had a capstan to drive it and it had sensing poles to determine when the trap when the tape made a complete loop and that would 
physically stepped the head down to the next track. And there was four independent tracks, two tracks per, like left and right. So that's where you get your eight tracks. People get also get confused when they hear eight track and they say, yeah, but there's only four programs. There's four programs. There's two channels, left and right. So there's your two tracks. So there's your eight tracks, four times two. Anyway, this one's working, as you can hear. This one I repaired. Tape is working fine. Program one. Program two. Anyway, that's that's that one. Let's uh, repair another one, and uh, we'll see how that one works out. And uh, then you'll know how to repair broken eight-track tapes. Look at the uh, the pinch roller on this one. It almost appears to be made out of plastic. Let's get this cassette open or this cartridge open. Now some of them are glued together, so we're going to actually this one here looks like it's glued together so we're gonna to have to pry this one apart and there's a rivet in the base here so we gotta get this rivet out there's a clip in the back here as you can see I'm gonna clip on this other side if I can pop it open there's that clip open and now if I just pry this I should be able to work that rivet out this rivet here is typically, it, it should have threads. I believe it's got threads that go around. So when they pushed it in, it actually rotated into its, uh, into the, the other side of the top side of the tape. So sometimes if you put some heat on the thing, get your soldering iron and heat this up. Just enough to soften the plastic, get the heat to transfer into the, into the rivet which is like a screw on these sometimes you can pry them out other times you have to kind of put a bit of heat on them and then they will they will come apart a little easier Just like that. okay you see what I mean this uh, this screw that's what they are so when they put them together at the factory they're, they're just put together by a press, which presses them in, and as they press them in, they rotate as it's going together. And you either have to cut a slot in the, into them so that you can get a screwdriver into them, which is another option to unscrew them, or just put a bit of heat onto them, and then you can put some pressure on it, and it will actually, it'll break the bond, and you can get it apart. So now I've got this tape, and I can get the outside loop this so-called excuse for a pinch roller looks like it's pretty much shot doesn't it it doesn't look like we're gonna have much grip on this this is a plastic one that used to have at some point it actually had a coating on there but the coating is worn off we're gonna splice this tape the same but I'm going to try and make something that will give me a bit of grip on this plastic uh, roller because this is gonna just slip there's not going to be enough grip between the uh, pinch roller and this plastic wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some electrical tape and I'm going to make myself uh, put one strip of electrical tape around this to give it a little more friction if possible. And we'll see how that works out. Again, the guy that owns these tapes would just like to be able to get a copy of them. So. If we can get this thing working to the point where we can make a copy of this tape, then uh, then he's happy. So we'll, we'll wind. We'll wind one strip of electrical tape around this plastic spool that is an excuse for a pinch roller and try to make it uh, a little more are a little less slippery so that should do that I'll just cut this and we'll try and get it to be the the same size We'll trim it down using a scalpel or something so we'll cut the strip off there
unfortunately for me, the Klein snips do a pretty good job of uh, trimming that tape back. So this should give us a little more grip than that hard plastic did that was there before. Now I'll splice this tape and we'll see whether this tape works. Okay, that's that. We'll get the cassette or the cartridge back together. Snap the clips in at the back. It'd be easier to clip it in this way. There we go. And then put the uh, screw back in something bigger to hit that with and now let's see whether this one will play I think we've solved another one. Again, some black tape to increase the friction on these ones that have the nice shiny. Normally there's a black, these are normally made out of rubber, right? But on that particular one, well, it, uh, it went all shiny. And the, the, the rubber or the, the grip coating on that, these are normally rubber, but some of them are plastic and they have a coating on them. So that was that one. I think this is probably going to be another one. Nope. This one hasn't failed, you see. This one here is okay. Just the tape is broken. So I've got a few more tapes I'm going to splice. Looks like this one here is coming apart right at the splice. Or no, here. This this one here, someone tried to fix it themselves. They spliced it with scotch tape right there. So all I, all I need to do to fix this one is to put some sensing tape on. And he's already broken the cassette open for me. So on this one, we'll just stick some sensing tape over the place where he already, pre, where he already spliced it, because you can see the splice is good. 
we just need to put some sensing tape there so that the track selector will automatically change. And that's another way you can repair them. You can splice them with conventional tape and then put the sensing tape over the front. Now, I don't know why the heck it's been looped around this way. Different cassette designs. This one here actually loops around. You can see where it's gone around the post at the back. On it, why they've done that, I don't know, but uh, some of them did. And then as the tape on this one moves, it spools up like that. I don't know, it doesn't look right. Normally they just spooled right on, but this one here looks like it's been around there from day one because I can see, I can see the graphite marks on the back here from the tape. So that one's back together, and this one here he's broken the, the guy that owns it broke the uh, broke the shell getting it apart. So when the shell is broken, we just put we use a soldering iron here, and just put a little bit of heat just to melt the plastic back together, just to give it a place to stick so that the tape doesn't fall apart. That way, if it ever has to be opened again, it can be that part can just easily be broken off. So we just kind of fuse the plastic of it together in a few of the different places. And that'll hold that cartridge back together. And now this one will play as well. It all sounds the same. It's tangle music. So I think uh, you guys now get the, the idea of how to splice uh, our eight track tapes. So I don't think I need to show you me doing the remainder of them, unless you really want to see how these things are done. Here, we'll take this one apart. We'll do one last one. This one here, I'll just heat this up. Get it hot. And then just jam a screwdriver down the middle here and pry it. Just like that. That's the easy way to open those ones up. Piece of cake. This one here, where is our, oh, it, uh, interesting. This one here is broken inside. The, the piece that broke off is actually still down down the middle of the uh, of the spool. So let's see if we can get it out of here. Now there's this plastic. This is a, a tape separator, so that has to go in there. But the tape comes out from the middle here. Let's just see if we can dig the tape out, get our our broken portion out. It'll be around here somewhere. There it is. I can see it. It broke right down there. Okay, we got that out. Our tape separator goes over here like this so that it pulls out from the middle like that. That's how the tape comes out. So it comes out like that. And if I hold this tape and just pull a bit, I can pull a bit slack out. So we'll, fl we'll splice this one here and then I'll call the video a day because you've seen me do three different, three different tapes that had different types of faults and then uh, then you guys will be you'll be on your own you'll be golden as they say
this is how you tension up a tape too. You just you pull it from the center of the loop, and the other it will self tension itself. That's the beauty of these things and how simple they were. And you know what? In car environments, they actually jammed up a lot less than cassettes because there was no there was no spools to take up. They just they were a graphite coated tape, and they just self tensioned themselves automatically. I may have to pull this for a bit to get it to uh, go back in, but it will. There it goes. Now, I'm not saying that they never got eaten. They did. If a machine was really dirty, the caps sometimes would get dirty in a, in a player and cause the tape to get kind of jammed up. But uh, usually they would, uh, you know, they would, your tape could get chewed up and you could just pull the tape out and kind of straighten it up a bit. And yeah, the, the, cr the crinkled part would go through and you'd hear it every time it played. But uh, usually the tapes themselves survived pretty good. This will retention itself after it's played a few times. Put the cartridge back together. These, these tapes all belong to a buddy of mine. They were his dad's tapes, and his dad had one of those Dymo label makers, and he got he went kind of crazy with it and put the Dymo labels on everything. Okay, my hammer. fixed. Now you guys know how to fix 8-track tapes. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.